so up, up next, we've got um, Sylvain Forte from uh, Suzanne, who is going to look at ESG controversy and SDG events on small companies. So Sylvain, I can see you there. Um, I'm going to hand straight over to you to, to jump into the, the session. Thank you very much, Dean. Should, should I be sharing my screen? Yes, please. I will. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Can you see my screen? Yeah, got that. Excellent. Well, th thank you very much. Thanks, Naida, for this, uh, this opportunity to speak. Um, so our objective is to illustrate the importance of controversy in, in kind of that fight against greenwashing and some of the methods that we can implement using uh, new technology, especially in natural language processing. So we'll, we'll start with uh, a very um, current controversy that we have in France right now, uh, where most of the team of Cézanne is, is based. And uh, from there, uh, we'll get into some of the uh, tools and some of the methodology we develop in order to, to help identify controversies and SDG events on small companies. Right, just a bit of context before we start. Uh, Cézanne is a firm specializing in alternative data. We're a team of 80 people, and we focus on natural language processing, meaning the ability to analyze text data at scale. We extract billions of articles and messages from the web and we transform them into insights. So why, why this matters right now is um, we, we have seen recently a massive controversy in France uh, around the retirement home uh, stock uh, Orpea, um, which was not specifically uh, on the green side and environmental side, but rather on a governance controversy and accusation of mistreatment. mistreatment. Uh, the stock lost 40% of its value in the matter of, of uh, three uh, uh, market days. And one of the big accusations that came out of, of, uh, of this uh, recent controversy is that uh, Orpea was actually very well ranked from an ESG perspective compared to peers. And that raises kind of this question of, of how uh, ESG scores actually reflect uh, the potential for, for company to be exposed to these types of issues. And we are a firm believer in the fact that there is a need to better track controversy and to make sure that controversies are actually identified completely separately from uh, sustainability factors and in a way that uh, sustainable actions can't compensate for uh, uh, bad behaviors and for uh, uh, headlines specifically on companies. So you see here some of the titles and that raises also the old controversy on Volkswagen. Some of these scandals highlight the limits of uh, ESG data. Uh, please note also that this topic is a, bit, it is a bit beyond greenwashing. So we really consider this not only on the environmental side, but also governance and social factors. So there's definitely an, a need to find a new ways to identify, uh, to uh, kind of unbiased these kinds of ESG rating. And if we look at controversy specifically, this is an indicator that we develop at CESAM. This is on Orpea. And we see that the ESG risk over time, as described specifically by, by controversy, is actually very high on Orpea and that the firm had been massively exposed to controversy in the past already. There was already a documentary mentioning the firm in several cases uh, of abuses in, in private retirement homes. And uh, we see also the large spike of data prior to the actual scandal emerging and during uh, the scandal. So the, the, the topic here is really that controversy detection is a good way to differentiate from an ESG perspective, uh, bad actions and good actions and to consider bad actions with a specific prism and also to really uh, raid the companies from this perspective. So the, the problem that, that appears then is that controversies are um, events that happen quite quickly. Uh, so traditional rating agency have, have a bit of a, a lag in these indicators. And also many, many firms, especially SMEs, public SMEs and private firms are not well covered uh, when considering uh, controversies because it's a lot of manual work, et cetera. So that's where technology is actually interesting. It's possible to read all of these articles and messages automatically and to extract uh, alerts and controversy scores automatically uh, so as to have an unbiased view and so, so as to make sure that it, it's possible to really understand what's happening on companies in real time. All right, so let, let's just take a look at, at the methodology that was really the goal of this presentation is how can we extract re relevant controversy factors, including on small SMEs and private firms? And how does that then translate into potential quantitative opportunities, uh, portfolio monitoring tools, alerts, et cetera, 
that can be leveraged by ESG. So at CESAM, we have a massive data lake and a product called Text Reveal with 16 billion articles and messages and 4 million sources. We basically use this tool in order to extract in multiple uh, languages uh, controversies over time. So it, it's really a, a combination of uh, international, national, and local news websites, uh, forums, social media, social trading, NGO websites, uh, whistleblower uh, uh, topics, etc. So it's very, very broad and uh, is immediately applicable to ESG. And then we have natural language processing algorithms, such as sentiment analysis, but also ESG topics analysis, which we apply to this data in order to get either streams of data in a continuous way, or in the case of this presentation, controversies generated as alerts and lists of relevant URLs. So this is really a fully automated process, but you'll see later that there is also human expertise in the loop, so as to make sure that we properly qualify these controls. So the, the methodology is, is, is the following. So we, we basically have an article or a message that could be either a potential uh, uh, controversy or a potential improvement, um, impact, sustainability topic on the positive side for a company. So on the left, you see that, that article on BHP, which is a mining company, and it's actually rather on the positive side. And this article is vectorized automatically with our algorithms in order to be transformed into numbers. And on the right side, we see that we have the description of the company and that we have a semantic context corresponding to environmental governance and social issues. And automatically the algorithm is basically comparing these two vectors, the article vector and the context vector for the environmental topic and identifying that this article is actually related to the company and to the environment and then uses sentiment analysis in order to assess whether it's a potential controversy on the negative side or potential improvement or positive impact. So from this methodology, we derive alerts and we derive controversies. So what we define as controversies is basically lists of contents on a scale from zero to five corresponding to the materiality and virality of the controversy generated on a daily basis and corresponding to ESG uh, category. Uh, the algorithm that we use are uh, ESG topics, sentiment, and also a decision tree. And we have fine tuning uh, with one of our, uh, of our partners that has a team of ESG experts annotating articles in order to make sure that these contents actually correspond to real controversy. So from a technical perspective, there's on average 2.4 alerts per year and per company. And we have a very high precision level in a fully automated way in these controversies. 100% on five out of five controversies, which are the most critical one, 97% of four out of five, and 74% on three out of five. So here is, here is an example. Uh, we showed some example before on, on Orpea, which is a part of the controversy that we detected using that methodology. We wanted to give you an example that is directly linked to a quantitative topic. So uh, recently we analyzed XFAB, a world leading semiconductor uh, producer uh, that is based in France and also has offices in other countries. And what happened is that mid November, there was an accident in a warehouse in Texas, and one person was injured and one killed. And that led to a lawsuit. So the system automatically detects this event and identifies it as a high level controversy uh, with a level of materiality, virality here of four out of five. So this is something that we can use and that we have immediately as the, the news comes out and where this is dynamically shared with the corresponding ESG team. Uh, you don't have to screen all of the context uh, yourself and to systematically uh, screen the web or news website. So what happens afterwards? The first uh, news starts in, on, on the 22nd and there's uh, over, uh, over uh, several uh, days, there's an 8.6% decrease in the stock price. And we have several alerts that are being raised by the system meaning critical alerts higher than four out of five, uh, which are being raised, transferred by emails and backed by CSV files as a way to also identify the data and store it in a more systematic way. So we also backtest this information. Uh, let me just show you the curve. So we basically backtest each of these factors on 400 major European stocks so as to understand whether they are, we can actually generate potentially systematic alpha in a long short strategy using these topics. So the goal is either to deallocate immediately to stop that exposed to controversies or actually to short some of these stocks. And we see that the simulated performance is pretty interesting uh, with an average uh, turnover of 17 days. 
So it's a fairly, fairly simple strategy, but just a way to show that these types of more uh, discretionary topics where you get access to alerts, you screen stocks, and you see articles and URLs actually coming up can also be used in a more quantitative way uh, because they, they actually represent data that can be also injected in databases uh, through APIs or, or flat files there. So back to status describe. And so what, one thing that is super interesting in this context, and, and I'll, I'll use that also as a, as a conclusion, um, it's basically that this methodology is, is applicable to companies of any size because uh, you can apply this to SMEs, you can apply this to private company. And these are companies that are mostly not well covered by traditional rating agencies and where um, asset managers and private equity firms don't have the manpower to actually identify these topics. So they may be exposed to some extent to greenwashing attempts, especially on the private equity side where they receive positive news from management on the sustainability aspect, but also on governance and social. And they may not receive the negative part uh, because they are not able to screen that systematically. So that's really a way to compensate for that bias, especially on small firms that are not well covered. And we cover around 5 million different firms. So really have deep access to private companies. And in addition, this is a type of methodology that can be used in a quantitative way too, that can help generate scores. That can also be used in a, in a, in a discretionary manner. And that, is, that has the advantage of being very timely. So instead of having a team screen that on a weekly, monthly, or even quarterly basis, it's possible to receive information every day and with on average 2.4 alerts generated uh, per day. So that was just a, a deep dive into this uh, methodology. Um, natural language processing has really clear advantage in ESG. It helps automate the process. It helps standardize. It helps create historical data sets that are consistent and that can be backtested. And it also helps screen at scale, especially on universes of firms that are small, that are hard to track in multiple languages worldwide. So NLP really has a very interesting technology for, for these types of approaches and can help fight greenwashing in that context. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sylvan. Really appreciate you taking some time out. Unfortunately, due to the time constraints, there is a question in there. If you if you still have time today to jump into the Q&A box and answer that via text, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your time. Appreciate thank you. it.